Okay, playing a nice long game, 30 minute game. Each game that I play dictates the concept and method that I'm going to be using, the smaller concepts and the smaller methods that I'll be using underneath the answer process. Because in my head, every game that I'm playing is different. I treat each game as, as a different game. Um, I'm not following any patterns. I might have an idea of patterns because I've been playing so long and I know what works and what doesn't work type thing, so that helps. But for each game that I'm playing, I'm trying to knock out the facts that yes, I've had the experience, I know that that is potentially a good way to play or that's a bad way to play. But in this game here that I'm playing right now, I throw all of that out of the window and start from scratch. So this would be a nice touch. He's got like a double dose, but we've got a double dose as well. We can take the pawn and we're on his knight. His knight takes the pawn here. Our knight can take the pawn. Either way, he can take this pawn. Should we go and defend that pawn? Should we attack his knight with a smaller piece so that he has to think about moving his knight and he loses, loses his intention of taking this pawn? We like to open the center. So I'm capturing the pawn so he can have this pawn if he wants. He's not actually done that just yet, so he'll be doing that after. Or maybe his queen's going to come with a double dose on the pawn here. Because momentarily he's a knight down, so he's going to want to get the knight back. He's not actually done that, so he's still kind of like a knight down. If we brought our queen here, because we're familiar with this sort of position, with the queen x-raying through, it's just that our knight is in the same position, so if I get my queen there first, and if he brought his queen, I'd be able to take his knight off first. But there's no pin per se as yet because my knight is in the way. So what do we do? I'm actually going to go for it, right? I'm attacking a piece that is unprotected. We're up a minor piece. Now he's defended it. Ah, so can we bring our knight back to this position and then put the pawn onto his knight? Or should we put the pawn onto his knight first? See the gaping gap here? The queen is probably going to want to come and shoot here. Put a check on the king. So we've got to be mindful of that situation. Could bring our knight here to attack. Dishevel our pawn structure a little bit. I'm going to bring the knight out and attack the knight. You see I'm starting from scratch. I'm still basing my knowledge on what I know. But in this game I'm looking at things with fresh eyes and it's not to say that it's going to work it's just that we are a minor piece up but when you're in these types of positions sometimes they're quite clever in the way that they operate because they find a way of getting the, the piece back so now we've got our queen protection but our queen is in front of our king so we've got to be very careful of that if he moves this bishop he's looking to get his rook in line with our queen so we're going to have to have a fianchetto which we don't really like but we'd have to do something like that so they're attacking this pawn here with the bishop that that gives us time to fianchetto doesn't it so that we can at least maybe go and castle let's just bring it here so bishop maybe coming here obviously attacking through on that side still mindful that he's looking for the rook to be lining up in front of our queen so that is the panic that is the panic station but we're making inroads into trying to develop that and he's doubling up yes yeah, so he's moved the bishop now ready to go so we need to get moving or else his rook is going to get us pinned And he's not gone for that yet, so I think we can now just go and castle. So I think maybe the big worry is out of the way. And just bring the knight around here, attacking this unprotected bishop. I moved a bit quick there, but I just needed to get that knight out of there. 
So Trent is, um, yeah, he's attacking a higher piece with a lesser piece. <clears throat> so we knew that attack was coming anyway. So we still do have this attack on his bishop. So when you've got a piece under attack, you don't normally go and attack another piece. Unless, of course, it is a higher piece. And that is what this opponent has done here. He does have this bishop that doesn't have any protection on it. So we could bring our queen here. So we're attacking two pieces now. The knight's attacking the bishop and the queen is attacking the bishop. So he's having two pieces to contend with. <clears throat> it's which one or is he got, going to attack a higher piece with a smaller piece? As we said. So we could bring the queen up here. Don't really want to inadvertently trap my own queen. But if I go here, I could bring my bishop here attacking his queen and look to maybe get the bishop here for a little checkmate type situation. So push here with the idea of here, the idea of there, and then the queen checkmate. That's all pretty obvious and straightforward. So let's see if we can go with that. The rook can always push down. It could get blocked off. He could bring his bishop back here attacking our queen. So the whole thing will change. Probably come back here, see if he wants to exchange off the queen. Because we can trade down now because we're a minor piece up at this moment. So it looks fairly interesting this game at the moment, based on what we were what we're actually looking at, which is playing the game <coughs> from scratch, taking away any history or knowledge that you think you may have, not talking about any opening type things from historical bygone eras having a look at the game as it is now not what others have predicted um, could happen in the game I'm actually doing my own predictions in this game so that I can help enjoy the game a lot better and the art of chess feels real to me so the rooks come down <coughs> now, it seems like a really odd move actually it's come down attacking a pawn So our bishop could attack their queen. Queen obviously can come here. <coughs> um, but we do have the anomaly of the bishop attacking our queen here. So we could just take the bishop off the board like we said. That was the other piece that was under threat. Um, for a pawn, I don't think that's a bit of any, any issue. Maybe the bishop's going to take. Is he looking to double up his rooks at some stage? But his, yeah, he still needs to develop a little bit. But always mindful of crazy moves that go on in chess. I can sit here and go, well, I don't know what that rook move was. Rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board. And then they come out with something that I haven't seen. So our main idea is coming here. He's now attacking our knight. Does our knight have something? It could actually just pop this off here. Um, because in reality, one of our pieces is a dead piece really because we're up a minor piece so we could look to just sacrifice but the queen will just take so if we go there the queen will just take so I don't know if I want to waste it could bring it back here just to block off the bishop could attack the queen queen takes the um, knight so he's further down the board then the bishop can come here and then Queen comes back, blocking. Mm. Yeah, that might be a waste of a move there because we really wanted the nice checkmate without any blockages. So let's just bring the knight back as a blocker. We're willing for the bishop to take it if need be. He might take with the rook here, the pawn, so that it's not supporting the knight. But that allows the knight to come here with support. It's not doing any of that. Okay, so we may have to force their hand then with the bit with their queen, just bringing the bishop here. He can always drop down actually with the pawn as well. There is that option, isn't there? So he blocks the bishop's power. We could go in front of the rook, which would be a bit annoying for them. Because he's got like the three, but our knight is covering here. But he's looking to go something like 
bishop takes the knight so that it's not covering this square then his rook's coming down if our rook takes his queen takes we take his queen and then his rook takes and is looking for like a back rank checkmate type situation and it can work if I don't do it right it, it can work but if we bring this bishop here and block that should be okay shouldn't it I think we're gonna block only thing that can touch it really is this pawn pushing down we can capture so he may bring this pawn to help the replication of the pawn when it does get taken so he still has a pawn on the bishop so the bishop has to move and then he gets his but the thing is he's got this knight here so the bishop still needs to do the capturing of the knight and that's the type of calculation that if you're looking at improving in your game that is the type of calculation you want to be doing for your own game oh like we said he's pushed down but he didn't bring this down for the replication so we're going to capture with the pawn here and then we're going to attack the rook and then the rook is obviously going to take the pawn on this side here so how then do we go for the oh it's going for that still okay let's capture so we captured the bishop here only thing that can touch this um, bishop now is this but we do have this pawn here which can block that off unless of course he attempts to go for a replication okay so the queen is going further so long as this queen is keeping that diagonal then we're not going to really get much play with the checkmate and plus this pawn is now blocking our way so he's looking to snap up a pawn his queen has gone all the way over the other side of the board away from protecting the king although it does have this um, juicy square here so we've got to look at how do we get to his king area I was going to bring the bishop attack the rook the rook wants to go over there anyway what is the benefit could just bring the bishop here now because he's got only got two rooks on there so if we move the bishop here to then go to there yeah so if we move the bishop there does he change his mind and come down I don't think so because the rook comes down we take his rook take rook takes so that's not going to work because he had the queen with the alakine's gun type situation so I think when we do go here he's still going to go there capturing the, the pawn because his motor set to do that so we could go here then his rook takes and then we go for the checkermator okay let's go for it so these moves look like they're going to slow us down but we've worked through the calculation and they're potentially maybe two moves behind if we can get that in so he may change his mind and bring his queen back again and maybe go for the exchange of the queens or something I kind of changed because he's not actually attacked but he's blocked his queen from actually this area so he's going to be too too late to the party so the queen, bishop goes here and there's nothing that can stop the checkmate now so a lovely example of calculation and I, I love calculating and it's really nice when the calculation pays off as well and you have to be flexible with it that's the thing it's one of those where I'd, I'll try and do up to maybe a maximum of four um, you can push it to eight if it's a foregone conclusion that you're putting pressure on the king and the king is forced to go in these particular um, positions if you're doing an eight count for like a, another piece then he's going for it anyway so it's checkmate so right so that was being late to the party really pleased with that particular game in the demonstration and hopefully I can keep continuing to do those types of things as I'm playing um, my longer games in tournaments and fun games, arenas etc.